Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk about childhood. From every childhood, we have stories. Some will be sweet, some embarrassing, and some cringeworthy. And I thought today I'd tell about the time I was arrested and facing the death penalty. Watch to the end to hear how I survived. So first off, as a teenager, I was into Civil War reenacting. I didn't know about cosplay and LARPing, uh, the Society for Creative Anachronism or Renaissance Fairs, but it's safe to say that if I had, I would have been into them too. I love dressing up and becoming someone else. Actually, <laughs> I still do, but I haven't had the opportunity to for a while. Before we get started, a quick highlight of what I'm drawing today. I've decided to draw this Civil War woman receiving some bad news. I want to work more on creating dynamic characters with good composition. So come along and watch me flounder my way through this piece, but you'll see that it all works out in the end. All right, back to my story. My favorite history era as a teenager was the American Civil War, or maybe you call it the war between the states. Um, regardless, American history that occurred between 1860 and 1865 fascinated me. I read as many historical fiction books as I could get my hands on, especially the um, Gilbert Morris series and uh, several of the books by Patricia Beatty. Um, Charlie Skedaddle and the Jayhawkers comes to mind. I pored over Civil War era textbooks I got from the library and read every single blog and website I could find on the topic. I followed Lee's military campaigns and judged McClellan's excessive caution. I knew all the key players from Pickett to Sherman to Jackson to Davis. I wanted to know as much as possible about the era and became obsessed with creating authentic, accurate representations of Civil War clothing and accessories. I even eventually sewed my own everyday gown completely by hand so I could claim it was 100% authentic. Yeah, I was that girl. So one summer, in the early days of my fascination with Civil War reenacting, my aunt and grandparents invited us to camp with them during a Civil War weekend at a campground. I borrowed some gowns and a hoop skirt from a costume shop friend we knew, bought some little white gloves, and found some lace-up boots that looked at least somewhat period correct. My younger sister sewed an incredibly gorgeous gown with blue floral stripes and made her own hoop skirt with boning and everything in it. She had gorgeous blonde hair that she put back into a cute little netted snood. I was rather jealous of her, if I'm honest, but also inspired by all the work she poured into it. It wouldn't be long before I followed in her footsteps. So the weekend dawned bright and sunny, and we enjoyed waking up every morning, getting dressed in our Civil War finery, and strolling off to the encampment to see all the fun. Soldiers from both sides, the Union and the Confederacy, enjoyed our stopping by and involved us as much as possible. They showed us their camp setup and how they cooked over an open fire with cast iron pans and utensils. I seriously thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever witnessed. They taught us to drill and even gave us enlistment papers. You had to make sure you got your papers signed and were honorably discharged or the soldiers will come after you later and send you before their firing squad as a deserter. It's true, I saw it happen. So I was extra careful to get my papers all signed properly by none other than General Ulysses S. Grant. They had a guy who had an uncanny resemblance to the real Ulysses S. Grant. He and his wife were very sweet and wonderful to us. It was like having some reenacting grandparents for the weekend. Without them, I doubt I would have become as enamored with Civil War reenacting as I did. But enough about that. I'm sure you're here to learn how I got arrested. So things couldn't have been going better. Friday night, they told us ghost stories over a bonfire and listening to their creepy stories and the eerie flickering light with the crackling of the campfire as the backdrop set the hairs on the back of my neck standing straight up. Apparently the Gettysburg battlefields are really haunted by things people can't seem to explain. At least they had me convinced that weekend. In any case, it was delicious fun to hang out by the bonfire and draw our first night there to a close. End of day one and I was as oblivious as ever. Day two would be very different. Saturday dawned bright and early and the quote-unquote general store was robbed by Confederate outlaws. We were tasked with aiding the wounded and excitedly watched the shootout commence. Some soldiers were very good at uh, quote-unquote dying and took their good old time to fully succumb. They staggered and then crumpled onto the gravel parking lot outside of the store. They writhed and moaned before finally becoming still. They were phenomenal actors. Of course, by the time we were allowed to walk out and check on the quote-unquote wounded, they had all died, so we couldn't save anyone. But it was still fun to be a part. All right, the moment you've been waiting for. After the general store was robbed, we thought maybe the fun was over, but that's when things really started to happen. Apparently, the Confederates got bored, and they started to offer their services up as bounty hunters. At first, they started with just executing a deserter or two from among their own ranks. They would gather a firing squad, march their prisoner out to an open spot, and then all fire away. The person, of course, always fell down and went very still. Uh, well, at least for a couple minutes. That was all well and fun, but they pretty quickly ran out of their own men that they could shoot. This was a smaller Civil War encampment, and the Confederate ranks were already pretty few. So they branched out and started taking requests for warrants on civilians. One of the first to be hunted and captured was my aunt. She was a good friend of theirs, and it wasn't long before she was tried and executed. It was funny and weird to see her marched out there in front of the line, offered a bandana blindfold, and then when the rifles barked, she fell down. 
things were getting serious. But I was naive and had no qualms that I was well out of harm's way. After all, I was a sweet girl and everybody loved me and my sister. We wandered back to our campsite to enjoy a good camp lunch, homemade subs, and were just discussing what we thought we might do that afternoon when three or four Confederate soldiers snuck around my grandparents' RV, their pistols at the ready, and surprised us. They had a warrant out for my sister and I. We were still eating, but they were kind enough to let us finish. Although they became annoyed that we were taking too long and asked us to please hurry up because they needed to get us processed and executed quickly. Inwardly quaking, I found it hard to finish my sandwich, but somehow managed it. Then we were marched through the campground. Now, our campsite was one of the farthest from the Civil War encampment area, so we literally were marched in front of everyone, even people who were there not connected to the Civil War weekend at all. I was uh, starting to panic. I had on a huge hoop skirt that would pop up awkwardly if you sat down in it incorrectly. Of course, I had Civil War era bloomers and petticoats on, but I began to realize how embarrassing it would be to have to fall down dead in my hoop skirt and have it pop up for everyone to see while I lay very still. I mean, I couldn't very well pop back up myself and adjust my skirt and then fall down dead again. <laughs> It was going to be monumentally embarrassing to get publicly executed, fall down, and have my skirt bounce back up. While I was panicking and perspiring on our march through camp, my sister was calmly thinking of a solution and demanded to have a chance to give account of herself. When called before their assigned judge, she quietly explained that she was a Confederate spy. She had a whole historically accurate persona figured out. I can't remember the name of the actual spy she was representing, but the Confederate bounty hunters recognized her name and she was miraculously cleared. Then they turned to me. And of course, I very confidently said that I worked with her. They looked like they might not go along with it for a moment, but my sister was so sweet and confirmed my story right away, although neither of us had talked about it before. I'm ever so grateful because I literally would have died if I had had to be executed all by my lonesome. So that's how I was arrested and faced the death penalty one afternoon in June. To this day, I still wonder who put a hit out on us. In all events, I survived the weekend, enjoyed a wonderful Civil War ball that evening, and went home that weekend promising myself that I would practice falling down in a hoop skirt before my next Civil War reenactment. <laughs> all right, wonderful friends. Thanks for coming along on my uh, trip down memory lane today. Have you done any kind of cosplay or reenactments or ren fairs? Let me know in the comments below as I'd love to hear about your experiences too. As always, friends, I'll see you next time and keep drawing.